All right, welcome back, everybody. Uh, today we're going to move into sections three and four, chapter two. Talk about different types of probability. Give you a little um, little starter kit with probability, and then go into um, how to use it just a little bit. All right. So there are three basic interpretations of probability. No one is better than the other. And over the course of the semester, I hope you'll see that in a way you're going to kind of use them interchangeably. But they all are, they all um, take into account different situations. So the first is classical probability. All right. So classical probability uses sample spaces to determine the probability that, ev that an event will happen. So, for example, the probability of event E equals the number of desired outcomes over the total number of possible outcomes. All right, so let's do a quick example to kind of illustrate uh, what this means. Let's go back in the last section, we did a gender problem where we said if a family has three children, find the probability that two of the three children are girls. All right, now with this problem, we just did the sample space, all right? So the sample space was boy, 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 right? And this is just us naming all the possible ways that this family could have three children. Boy, boy, girl, boy, girl, boy, and boy, girl, boy, and boy, girl, 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 boy, boy, girl, boy, girl, 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 boy, and girl, girl, girl. Now, in the last section, we said there were eight potential ways to do this. So let's check our work to make sure we got them all. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. I think I got all the possibilities here. All right. So now I've changed the question a little bit. Now, this was the answer to the last question. Just give me the sample space. Now, using our sample space, what we can do is we can say, hey, what's the probability that we will have that two of the three children will be girls all right so how many outcomes have two girls let's oh and that was a b and okay and that was a b and let's try this one more time and that was a b just trying to eliminate the highlighter that way I can highlight other things good all right so we need to high we need two girls all right so I'm going to take my highlighter again and I'm going to do let's see find all the possibilities where we have two girls I got two girls here oh there we go two girls so I got Three possibilities with two girls out of a total of eight possible outcomes. So the probability that they're going to have a girl is three out of eight. All right, now, and you could say probability of E if you wanted, but I would probably say probability of a girl of at least, here we go, uh, probability of two girls is three out of eight. All right, so the second type of probability we have is called empirical probability. All 
All right. And improb empirical probability relies on data to determine the likelihood of outcomes. So the probability of event E equals the frequency over the sum of all frequencies. Let's scroll that up a little bit. All right, so let's try an example. All right, in a sample of 50 people, 21 have blood type O, 22 have blood type A, five are type B, and two have type AB. The question is, find the probability of type O. All right, now this is empirical because we have data, right? So I'm gonna set up a chart just to help me organize my data and frequency. So I have A is 22, B is five, O is 21, and AB is two. All right, and we check our work and we say this totals, should total 50. 22, 43, 45, five is 50. So we put the desired frequencies, which is 21, over the total frequencies, which is 50, and hence our probability of type O. There we go. Now, these problems are going to get more difficult as they go on. I'm just trying to expose you to the idea. That way, um, when you get to the more difficult problems, you have a little bit of experience. The last type of probability is called subjective probability. And subjective probability is using information to make an educated guess. So some examples of subjective probability would be like um, predicting a sports outcome. Predicting that the Chiefs will win the Super Bowl again or predicting the Giants will uh, win the division or something like that. Um, that is subjective probability. Also, one very more common that people don't realize is the weather. 60% chance of rain. Okay, it is what it is. All right. So, uh, let's move forward. Complement. Of an event. Complement of an event, so for example, if I have is, if I have the probability of event E, is probability of event E with a bar over it, that means E complement, all right? So probability of E complement is whatever is not in E. So for example, if I have If my event is rolling a four, and pretty much when I'm talking about rolling a dice, unless I otherwise specify, assume I'm talking about a standard six side dice. All right, so this would be rolling a four on a six sided dice. The complement would be one, two, three, four, five, six, or one, two, three, five, six, excuse me. Or you could say the event is not rolling a four. All right. So the second is picking a letter and getting a vowel. All right. So I pick out of my 26 letters and the event would be getting a vowel. The complement would be 
either not getting a vowel or getting a consonant. All right. Uh, the third example I'll give is if we're picking a day of the week and getting a weekday. The complement would be picking a day of the week and you could either say not getting a weekday or you could say getting a weekend. All right. So now that we're talking about probability a little bit, I want to go through the first uh, one of the first basic rules of probability called the addition rule. All right. And, but before we can talk about the addition rule, we have to um, define something called mutually exclusive events. You might have heard the term mutually exclusive before. You might have heard each word before. However, I find that, again, Kind of defining this for all of us really is helpful. So for the idea of mutually exclusive events, it would be two events that cannot occur at the same time. All right. So if two events cannot occur at the same time, I'll give a quick example. For example, uh, flipping a coin. If you flip a coin, you're going to get a head or a tail, right? But you can't get both events at the same time. You can't get a head tail. It's impossible. So if we wanted to say we wanted the probability of event A or event B, all right, the proper way to do that would be the probability of event A plus the probability of event B. So in our example of flipping a coin, if A was heads and B was tails, and we said we wanted to know the probability of getting a head or a tail, right? Probability of getting a head would be one half, right? Two outcomes, one of them is heads. Uh, probability of getting a tail, Again, same two outcomes, but one of them is tails. We're pretty much guaranteed to get a head or a tail, right? There is no third possibility that we could get. One half plus one half equals one. And just to state for the record, if an event is guaranteed to happen, we are guaranteed to get a head or a tail. That probability is always equal to one. All right, for example, if we're picking a day of the week, and we want to pick a day that ends in Y, let's say. Well, that's guaranteed to happen, right? So the probability would be one. Uh, I'll just say the flip side for the record again. If, a, if an event is guaranteed not to happen. For example, um, what's the probability that my, na my last name is Smith? Well, my last name is not Smith. So it's guaranteed to not happen. Um, therefore, the probability would be zero. Or what's the probability that Thanksgiving would be held in December? Well, Thanksgiving has a set day and a set day of the week even. Um, so that probability again would be zero. So let's say we don't have mutually exclusive events or yeah, let's say the events are not mutually exclusive. If the events are not mutually exclusive, the probability of A, and here the key word is or. All right, very often you'll see the word or right in the problem. But if, if basically what you're doing is finding the probability of an event A or B, head or tail, that kind of a thing, 
All right, then we need to do some sort of adding. Now, in this case, it would be the probability. Oop, I am cannot write today. Probability of A plus the probability of B. But then we have to subtract off the overlap. The overlap would be the probability of A and B. All right, so I am going to do an example of both. All right, so let's start with the first one. At a political rally, there are 20 Republicans, 13 Democrats, and six independents. If a person is selected at random, find the probability that he or she is either a Democrat or independent. Once I see that word or, I know I have to add. Now, the second, first thing I have to do is I have to figure out, are these mutually exclusive events? Can you be a Democrat and a Republican? Well, unfortunately, well, fortunately or unfortunately, the answer is no. You cannot be both. When you register to vote, you are either registered as a Democrat or you're registered as a Republican. Now, or you, and that's the way people identify. If they identify as a Republican, they can't say, well, I'm a Republican Democrat. I'm a Democrat Republican. Well, the Democratic Republicans went out with Thomas Jefferson. Um, people are either Democrats or they are Republicans. Okay. The third option is independent. All right. So if they are a registered independent, again, they cannot be a, a registered independent and a registered Republican at the same time. So these are indeed mutually exclusive events. So if I wanted to know the probability of D or I, the first is the probability of Democrat. Now we're going to use our classic, well, we're going to use our, our data to get our thing. So if I add up 20 plus 13 plus 6, I get 39. So there are 39 total people in this room. And 13 of them are Democrats. So 13 out of 39. And for Republicans, it's still out of 39, but there's only six of them. So I would say once you add them together, it would be 19 out of 39. Now, people ask the question all the time when they talk about probability. Should I leave it as a fraction? Should I leave it as a decimal? Well, the first thing you always need to do is you need to read the directions. If the directions say, do a, you know, round to three decimal places, then you need to leave it as a decimal rounded to three decimal places. Um, absent of that, you'll see me fairly typically leave my probabilities as fractions. Um, some people may shudder, but as long as your fraction is somewhere between zero and one, um, that is fine with me. If you want to convert it to a decimal, that's okay too. I would say more than likely, um, for the assessments that you'll get, especially ones that are online, if you're doing online assessments, most likely your teacher will have the, um, the answer as a decimal rounded to a specific number of decimal places. So definitely take a look at the directions and make sure you're putting it in correct form. But if you're just doing it on your own and just writing it on paper, um, I have no problem um, if you left it as a fraction. All right, so let's go to the second example. Okay, in a hospital unit, there are eight nurses and five physicians. Seven nurses and three physicians are females. If a staff person is selected, Find the probability the subject is a nurse or a male. Well, let's start with, is this mutually exclusive or not? So the question is, if I wanted to find the probability of a nurse or a male, could I have a male nurse? And in this case, the answer is yes. You very, very, um, you have male nurses here. So not mutually exclusive. I'm going to use ME for mutually exclusive. Now I'm going to scroll up a little bit and I want to make a chart for my data. So I have nurses physicians 
I have female, male, and total. So I have, let's look back at the problem. I have seven nurses and three physicians are female. I have a total of eight and five. Therefore, I must have one male nurse. There's your not mutually exclusive and two male doctors. All right. So that gives me a total of 13 people. Eight and five is 13. So let's do our probability. So probability of a nurse or a male equals the probability of nurse plus the probability of male. But then I'm going to I'll point out the double counting. I've got to subtract off the double counting, which is probability. Oop. Let's switch that around. Probability of nurse and male. All right. So how many nurses do we have? Well, how many total nurses we have is eight, right? Seven plus one equals eight. So I have eight out of 13 is my first probability. Now I'm gonna add up, I'm gonna use a different color highlighter, try to do this right. Now I wanna figure out how many males do I have? Well, I have one male, two males. So, or well, two more males. So that's three total men out of a total of 13 people. Now what I want, now the reason I wanted two different color highlighters here is because in the box here, I've counted that one twice, haven't I? Right, once with the green and once with the blue. Well, if I double count, my numbers are off, right? So I have to subtract off one out of 13, my, the amount of male nurses. All right, so now eight plus three is 11, minus one is 10 out of 13. And there's my probability of getting a nurse or a male. All right, well, thank you for listening. There is an awful lot to do. I will see you next time. Have a good one.